Yeah. Good afternoon, students. Today we are going to discuss about the last part in the human digestive system. So already in the previous classes we discussed about two, three parts. Human digestive system part one, part two, part three we discuss. Today we are going to discuss about two, part four. Before going to start our part four. I am going to recall the first, second and third one once again. It is very clear. So many questions we can make here. So first I told to you what is ingestion. So keeping the food in our mouth is called ingestion. So we are keeping some amount of food. What we are eating. So this is ingestion. Okay, ingestion. What is ingestion? Keeping food in our mouth is called ingestion. Later on what will happen? Will we keep like that? Will we keep like that? We won't keep like that. We eat them, grind them. So, mastication, the word we discuss. What is mastication? Grinding the food materials. So, we can grind, we can um, eat the food materials that is called mastication. What is mastication? Mastication, T I O N. What is mastication? Grinding the food is called mastication. After mastication, we swallow, which we swallow that is called bolus. So, what is happening in the mastication? Three pairs of salivary glands, sublingual, submaxillary, parotid. Three pairs of salivary glands release saliva. In that saliva, an enzyme is there that is amylase or tyralin that acts on carbohydrates which are present in this food. That carbohydrates change as dextrins and maltoses. So, carbohydrates digestion completed in the mouth itself. So that change as sticky nature which we swallow that will be called as a bolus. Bolus, uh, this is a food pile, this is known as esophagus. So by the peristalsis movement it entered into the stomach. Where the esophagus giant that is called cardiac splinter, cardiac splinter and splinter. So another one is Pile splinter here. This is called pile splinter. End of the stomach. End of the stomach. So here the bolus entered into this. Here we discussed in the last class what the um, hydrochloric acid and gastric juice which are present in the stomach. Stomach walls releases hydrochloric acid and gastric juice. HCl, HCl, gastric, gastric juice. HCL and gastric juice. So what happened here? HCL and gastric juice. HCL kills some microorganisms which are present in the food. Gastric juice releases pepsin, enzyme name, pepsin. Pepsin acts on proteins. It change as peptones. It change as peptones. Pepsin acts on proteins and change as peptones. What does release by the uh, stomach walls gastric juice and pepsin gastric juice and hydrochloric acid what does gastric juice contain pepsin what does hydrochloric acid contain acid only that kills the microorganisms what does gastric juice contain gastric juice contains an enzyme which is called pepsin it acts on protein it changes peptones later on so the food turns into chyme so in the stomach after gastric juice and hydrochloric acid react on that bolus that change as chyme so that entered into the duodenum this is the u shape part we discussed in the last class the duodenum that is the first part of the small intestine that is in u shape so into the duodenum chyme enters so where that 
entrance is there, there is a splinter that is called pyloric splinter. Here up cardiac down pyloric splinter. Cardiac splinter, pyloric splinter. Cardiac splinter allows the bonus into the stomach, pyloric splinter allows the chime into the duodenum. So duodenum connected with the pancreas and the liver. Pancreas releases a juice that is called the bile. It won't have any enzymes. Which juice won't have any enzymes? Bile. Once again, this is one more important question. Is there any enzymes in the bile? No. Or which juice won't have the enzymes? Bile. So bile releases into the duodenum. It is the first part of the small intestine. It acts and chime. So here carbohydrate digestion completed. In the stomach proteins digestion completed. In the duodenum fats digestion anchor. Bile acts on fats. Fats change as fatty acids and glycerols. So carbohydrates, proteins and fats digestion completed. So bile releases the, into the gallbladder. Bile concentration occur in the gallbladder. From the gallbladder into duodenum that bile releases. So this is called a cystic duct. Cystic duct. Which duct connected with the uh, liver and duodenum? Cystic duct. Which duct connects liver and duodenum? Between the liver and duodenum, gallbladder is there. Liver to gallbladder, gallbladder to duodenum. That duct is known as cystic duct. What is it called? What do we call that? Cystic duct. So, later on, from the pancreas, pancreas releases again three enzymes. Pancreas releases a juice that is called pancreatic juice. In that three enzymes are there. Pancreas releases a juice which we call as pancreatic juice. In that pancreatic juice three enzymes are there. Amylase, trypsin, lipase. Amylase again acts on carbohydrates. This change as maltose. Amylase change as uh, acts on carbohydrates and that change as maltose. Next. Trypsin is there. Already we discussed here. Trypsin. Here trypsin. Trypsin acts on proteins. Trypsin acts on proteins. Again, second time digestion occurring. So amylase acts on uh, maltoses which formed in that mouth that changes again sugars. Okay. Then the second uh, trypsin acts on trypsin acts on proteins. It changes peptones upper and here also here and this place also again second time digestion occur trypsin acts on proteins it changes peptones lipase lipase acts on fats it changes fatty acids and glycerols fatty acids and glycerols later on it reaches into the second part of the small intestine in the coil like structure which we call as jejunum coil like structures which we call as a jejunum what is the coil like structure present in the small intestine jejunum what is the second part of the small intestine jejunum okay so in the jejunum here i showed with the dots these dots are finger like structures which are located in the surface of the small intestine which we call as villi v i l l i villi so villi absorbs the digestive substances digestive substances so before going to uh, absorption one more thing also we want to discuss here. What is happening here? Small intestine also releases intestinal juice. Small intestine, small intestine also releases intestinal juice. That intestinal juice consists of two enzymes. Peptases sucrose. Peptases sucrose. So, this act on peptones and sucrose whatever the maltose we call as that is known as also sucrose so peptases change as amino acids sucrose change as a glucose with the help of intestinal enzymes what are the enzymes here peptases and sucrose 
so kreja also we can call it so that adds on sucrose so sucrose change as a glucose peptides change as a amino acids so these are the digestive substances very microscopic substances which are absorbed by this microvilli which are located on the small intestine so inner surface on the means not outside inner surface uh, on the inner surface of the small intestine microvilli villi are microvilli we can call it which absorbs digestive substances from the small intestine microvilli what are the finger like uh, structures present on the inner surface of the small intestine microvilli so that microvilli absorbs digested substances and it is transferred to each and every cell of our body along with the blood because these enter into the blood and blood carries all the glucose substances into the each and every cell of our body so we discuss the respiratory system so oxygen also carried along with the hemoglobin this glucose and oxygen gives uh, into the each and every cell of our body their glucose combined with the oxygen oxidation occur energy releases that is energy releasing system respiration second lesson we discuss so for that it has to transfer that absorbed by the uh, villi which is located at the inner surface of the small intestine later on what will happen here undigested this is the last part of the ileum is the last part of the small intestine ileum is the last part of the small intestine how many parts are there in the small intestine three parts are there duodenum u shape jejunum coil like structure so last part is the ileum so ileum connecting with the large intestine so what happened here undigested undigested which moves jejunum ileum and finally it reaches into the colon the last part of the digestive system uh, means uh, this is the large intestine colon so this is colon and it moves undigested to go to the rectum rectum to go to the rectum undigested move through the large intestine colon and it reaches up to rectum so then the undigested we remove from our body by the process that is called defecation what do we call defecation 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 means removal of waste from our body so faculties removing process is called excretion nothing but defecation so here after defecation what happened so uh, all the waste materials are removed from our body itself so this is completely our digestive system here so many questions are there while you are watching and while you are reading you yourself make more questions according to our academic standards you can make number of the questions if you understand so what is ingestion keeping the food in our mouth is called ingestion what is mastication grinding the food is called mastication so what happened while we grass uh, mastication so saliva releases what the, what enzyme present in the saliva amylase so what is the movement uh, can we observe in the esophagus peristalsis movement this is called peristalsis movement so what moves inside the esophagus bolus bolus moves peristalsis movement and it reaches into the stomach where the esophagus join in the stomach uh, what is the splinter present that is cardiac splinter upside it is near to the heart so that's what that is called cardiac splinter so what uh, juices present in the small intestine hydrochloric acid acid present and uh, gastric juice present what does gastric juice contain gastric juice contain pepsin where it acts pepsin acts on protein what are the products of for this reaction peptones formation occur then chain formation occur in the stomach where the chain formation chain formation occur in the stomach so chain moves toward to the duodenum the first part of the small intestine 
where the diode arm starts there is a splinter what is the splinter name pyloric splinter pyloric splinter then when the chime entered into the diode arm what will happen when the chime entered into the diode arm bile releases uh, from the liver does it contain any enzyme no enzymes are there in the bile so what is emulsification this bile acts on fats and it changes as a fatty acids which is called as emulsification this is one more question what is emulsification fats formation occur with the help of bile bile acts on fats and it changes as a fatty acids the process is called emulsification after that what will happen pancreas releases a juice what does it contain pancreatic juice contains three enzymes amylase trypsin lipase so again they act on carbohydrates proteins and fats so finally what is it? small intestine also releases juice that is called intestinal juice they contain sucrose and the peptases peptases acts on peptose which is formed by the um, earlier process so that change as amino acids so sucrose acts on sucrose cane sugar also we can call that that change as a glucose so that glucose absorbed by the villi which is present in inner surface of the small intestine that uh, transport into each and every cell along with the blood circulation so whatever remain that is undigested so undigested move move to large intestine through the last part of the small intestine which we call as ileum duodenum jejunum ileum so three parts we can see in that small intestine so that undigested moved into the large intestine so that this is called colon colon it, uh, it reaches the rectum the rectum afterwards and as the opening uh, through that opening we send out the waste materials that is called defecation that is called a defecation so ente the mouth to anus this is called a digestive tract or gut g u t gut means a digestive tract so you can write a flow chart you can draw the picture you can explain everything enzymes names you want to remember so many questions you can write so many bits also you can write who are my questions you can write model making questions uh, communicate through the drawings you can uh, show what is this you can show this what is this you can show this what is